Good morning. Welcoming you all to Life and Grace Ministries English service. We are so glad that we could come and be part of your homes and celebrate the goodness of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We're going to sing some songs and listen to the word and I'm sure you're going to have a good time with us. Come on, let's celebrate the goodness of our Lord. Thanks for joining us. favor be upon you and a thousand generations in your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations in your family and your children and their children and their children
I'm so excited to bring God's word for you today. You now the word of God, it is a lamp unto our feet. The word has the power to bring life into our body, into our days, into our time, into our future. You know, the word defines our life. The word constructs our life. The word beautifies our life. The word has the power to bring every stronghold down. The word has the power to give the breakthrough like no other power in this world. The word has the life of God. So it is such an exciting opportunity for me to bring that word to you. And I'm sure it's going to bless you. And I want to read from Romans chapter 8 verse 31. It says, what then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for you, who can be against you? You know, Paul is writing to the church, questioning them. If God is for you, who can be against you? I want you to know this today that God is for you. God is not against you. God is not fighting with you. God is not at war with you. God is for you. Amen. What a privilege it is to know that the creator of the universe, the master of all creation, God almighty, God all powerful, God immortal, God who fills everything in every way, God who is a giver of life, God who satisfies everything in this world, every being in this world, every animal, every bird, every creature of the sea, every human beings, He is for you, He is on your side. And the beautiful thing is, God chooses be on your side. He made this choice. I want to stand with you. That is his choice. If you ask God today, this is what he will tell you. I am with you at all times. When you wake up in the morning, I'm with you. When you go to sleep, I'm with you. When you are traveling, I'm with you. When you are conversing, I'm with you. When you are studying, I'm with you. When you are in a meeting, I'm with you. No matter where you go, no matter what you do, I want you to know this, that God is always with you and is on your side. He doesn't take a side against you. He's on your side. That means he's got you covered. You now we are conditioned to think this way to measure whether God is with us. Like this. We look at things that is happening around us. We look at the situation, we look at the crisis, we look at the need, we look at the difficult times and then we wonder, we measure, you know, we evaluate like this, is God with me? Is it what God is trying to tell me? That is some, some, some of is angry with me? You know, we look at all these things, that is how the world is also doing this evaluation, whether God is with them or not. They look at the situation, they look at the crisis, they look at the times that they are in, and then they are thinking, probably God is against me, and then they try to appease God. They are trying to, you know, please God. That's why they do so many things, you know. They do it in action. They do it in prayers. They do it in dedication. They do it in vows. They do it in disciplining themselves. You know, hurting themselves. So many things. The world does so many things to appease God so that God can be with them. But the reality about our God is this. No matter what you do. No matter what you believe. No matter what you go through. I want you to be sure of this thing. God is with you at all times. Amen. And the benefit of God being with you is this. If God is with you, then no one can stand against you. 
if god is with you who can be against you another translation says like this if god is with you who can be successful against you you know today we face crises just like how paul faced that day how the church of romans faced that day the needs of human beings are there and it is real just like how our forefathers from the bible days faced all those needs then our forefathers in this in this earth our know, grandfather our fathers you know our great grandfathers whatever needs i faced they are as real as they could be but the good thing is in spite of all the challenges they faced this is the confidence that we can have that those challenges those needs those crises those troubled times can never be successful against us if you and i believe that god is with us amen if you are going through some challenging time some difficult time some disturbing time which is shaking you you know which is sifting you i want you to notice it is just very periodical it is just time bound but the good thing is and the good news i want you to know is this it can never succeed against you amen you know just turn back and look at your life how many challenging times you've been through how many difficult times you've been through how many times you were so sick that you thought it's over how many times the need was so grave that you thought that you can never recover how many times you were so helpless and hopeless but look at you today you are sitting and you are listening to the sermon that tells me they didn't succeed against you and that makes me announce this to you that god was for you then and god will be for you now and god will be with you in the future and it will never change because he said i will be with you as he was with moses as he was with david as he was with abraham as he was with isaac that's exactly who our god is and he also made a statement i will never leave you nor forsake you but is your mind willing to accept this truth that god is for you and he is not against you you might ask me a question what makes you think god is with me what makes you think that god is for me let me read a little bit from romans chapter 829 it says like this for those god for new i want you to know the first thing god has predestined you he knows you already you are not a shock you are not a surprise you are not an accident god knows you and he has predestined you look at the quality of your call even be- before you can qualify yourself to be god's child even before you can qualify yourself for god to be with you god chose you to be with you you are god's choice you are god's choice you know even jesus when he is talking to his disciples he is saying this you did not choose but god chose you i want you to know this it's god's choice that he wants to be with you if you are listening to me i want you to know this you are god's choice isn't that beautiful to know that god chose you god has chosen you so that he can be with you and it says after that he predestined you to be conformed to the likeness of his son look at this his choice you are his choice he chooses you and then he transforms you 
to be in the likeness of his son that means you have the likeness and the image of god in you right now as you are living in this world as you are doing life in this world you are not an ordinary person you are not just a natural person you are a supernatural person you are humanity with divinity that means you are a 100% human being controlled by 100% god you are a 100% human being having the ability to manifest the totality of god in this world in the likeness of his son in the likeness of jesus in the likeness of the creator full of life full of joy full of peace full of hope full of health full of wisdom full of knowledge beautiful isn't it he chose you to be like him he chose you to carry his dna he chose you to carry himself in this world and it says and those he predestined he also called those he called he also justified those he justified he also glorified look at this those he predestined he has called and he has glorified he has justified you know this word justified means you are absolved of all your mistakes you are absolved of all your shortcomings you are absolved of all your actions you are absolved of all the inability as a human being that you have in you to manifest god's likeness and you are made worthy that's what being justified means you are made worthy to live to prosper to be protected to be promoted to progress to have an influence to succeed to stand strong and tall you are justified made totally worthy you know there is such power in justification that there is no past that holds you back anymore there is no weaknesses of yours there is no action of yours that holds you back anymore your action they don't define your blessings your position your prominence but your faith that's what justification is all about that's what being righteous is all about your action you are absorbed of all your action now you continue living your life based on your faith in the act of justification that god has justified you with let me quote an example from the bible the life of abraham you know in genesis chapter 12 we read like this he goes to egypt because there is a famine in this land and the people of the land they admire sarah's beauty and they take it to the palace and before going there abraham is telling sarah you know don't tell them i'm your husband i might be killed because of your beauty they want to have you so just tell them i'm your brother he's lying a blatant lie and when god intervenes you know according to the world just system you know who should be reprimanded it's abraham because he is a liar when god intervenes god reprimands pharaoh and his people and he is telling them don't lay your hands on sarah she is abraham's wife and pharaoh you know being reprimanded by god because god is with abraham god is for abraham he is declared righteous because of his faith so you look at that is action is absolved is faith kicks into 
power there it empowers his future is it is empowering his days it is empowering his position there it is empowering his prominence there and he is regarded he is considered because god was for abraham and pharaoh was reprimanded we see the same thing happening again when it comes to abraham and abimelech same story repeats instead of god reprimanding abraham god gets into abimelech's dream and tells him be careful not to touch sarah sarah is abraham's wife and abimelech you know he is blessing abraham with gold silver cattle and you know flocks and he i mean abraham comes out prospering from that place you know that's the blessing of justification which in turn tells us that god is for us and not against us i want you to know just because you go through some difficult time don't come to a conclusion that god is against you god will get to work god will get into it god will intervene and he will prove that god is for you so in the time where you are supposed to lose i am declaring this over you you will come out succeeding you will come out prospering you know any plans any devices any wild plans of the devil or any crisis any challenges they can never succeed against you they will come against you but because god is for you they can never succeed against you and then the next part says you know and those he predestined he also called those he called he also justified those he justified he also glorified let me explain this word glorified for you you know glorified means one translation says dignified clothed with dignity you know if the ambassador of our country you know whichever country he goes to you know what it signifies he carries the dignity of this country which he represents he is a dignified citizen of the country he represents same way when god declares that he has glorified you he is saying heaven's dignity is upon you you resemble heaven you represent heaven you have the backing of the heavenly kingdom you have the support of god wherever you go they cannot apprehend you they cannot fight you they cannot you know come against you because the dignity of this land is supporting you it's backing you up same way heaven is backing you up heaven's dignity is upon you you know in the book of isaiah chapter 54 let me read that for you it's a beautiful passage of scripture you know about being justified and glorified isaiah 54 14 it says like this in righteousness you will be established look at this in righteousness they be read about justified right this is what it is being justified means you are made right you are made righteous you are qualified you are made worthy in righteousness you will be established that means the worthiness that god places upon you establishes you okay because of which tyranny will be far from you you will have nothing to fear how beautiful is this when you are in when you are established in righteousness that means that says that god is for you and not against you now read this in light of that it says tyranny will be far from you they will be there but they will be far from you you will have nothing to fear terror will be far removed it will not come near you beautiful right it will be far from you 
they cannot come near you and look at this if anyone does attack you it will not be my doing god is clearly saying anything that is trying to attack you it is not my doing don't ever believe anyone who comes and tells you god is against you god is fighting against you god is battling with you no god will never battle with you god will never fight against you he is for you don't let any circumstances detail it to you that god is fighting against you no god is for you look at this whoever attacks you will surrender to you that's the power of god being for you who ever i will put it this way whatever situation whatever need whatever crisis whatever challenges they attack you they will surrender to you amen and verse 17 says no weapon formed against you will prevail and you will refute every tongue that accuses you this is the heritage of the servants of the lord and this is a vindication from me beautiful right you are such a privileged being in this world you have the likeness of god you are justified you are glorified because of which we can say god is for me and not against me if god is for us who can stand against me who can stand and succeed against me what can stand and succeed against me you are such a glorified dignified person in this world let me show you another example in the book of daniel chapter 5 verse 11 it talks about daniel like this daniel chapter 5 verse 11 there is a man in your kingdom who has the spirit of the holy gods in him look at this it's talking about daniel saying he has a spirit of the holy gods what does romans chapter 8 says you have the likeness of god same thing you know being glorified being justified means as this you are made worthy to carry the dignity of heaven to carry the fullness of heaven that means just like how it talks about daniel it will be said about you that you have the spirit of the holy gods in you in him was found insight and intelligence and wisdom like that of the gods you have the likeness of god now what is your privilege you have the intelligence you have the insight and you have the wisdom like that of the gods it was talked about daniel like this you now being glorified is such a privilege i'm challenging you i'm telling you you have the intelligence you have the intelligence you have the insight you have the wisdom of god working in you and because of which it talks about daniel like this king nebuchadnezzar your father your father the king i say appointed him chief of the magicians enchanters astrologers and diviners you know they were the hierarchies in the kingdom during the times of nebuchadnezzar and here it has been said about daniel like this he was the chief of all the chief that's how god sees you that's how god has positioned you that's how god has promoted you with jesus christ that's where you are chief higher than the best of the world now that's why the bible says god raised us up with jesus christ and seated us with him high above every power every authority every dominion every wisdom every knowledge everything that is in this world being glorified being justified is not to be taken for granted understand who you are based on the scripture there is no one who could stand against 
the wisdom of the understanding of you know daniel no astrologer no diviner no wise men could stand against and succeed against the wisdom the insight the intelligence of daniel same power is working inside of you same authority is working inside of you and after having done all of this you know if you go back to romans chapter 8 it says you know he got did all of this and then this is a question paul is you know posing to us what then shall we say in response to this response to being glorified and being justified being predestined being created and established in the likeness of his son jesus what can you understand out of all of this he's saying god is for you and not against you beautiful right you know god having put all that effort to justify you and glorify you do you think it is for nothing no he's saying i am for you and not against you if i am for you then no powers no authority no wisdom no crisis no sickness no need no challenges can stand against you and succeed you know we read about this three young men in the book of daniel sadrach meshach abednego they were asked to bow down before this big statue that the king erected but these guys took a stand he's saying we will never bow down before anyone but only in front of our god and king nebuchadnezzar you know he increased the intensity of the fire and they threw him in the furnace the fiery furnace fire is supposed to consume at the power of the fire it can burn anything it can destroy anything and these guys are going into that fire and we read in the bible the king and the people along with them sorry along with them okay the king and the people along with them they suddenly saw instead of three men who were thrown in there there is another person who is walking with them the sub, the fire which is supposed to consume them is not doing its work it's not succeeding against those three men god he didn't predestine you for nothing he didn't call you for nothing he didn't justify you for nothing he didn't glorify you for nothing he did all of this so that he can be with you and so nothing can succeed against you he wants to bring you into prominence into prosperity into progress into promotion into health into peace into joy into quality life a life of abundance be bold be strong don't look at what is happening right now and say this is going to get me no declare it boldly they can come against me but they can never succeed against me you know the bible says they may come against you in one way they will run away in seven ways you will search for them and you will not find them see you are a power to be reckoned with there's nothing that can stand against you there's nothing that can fight you and have victory over you you are a conqueror you are a victor you are a champion you are more than a conqueror do not be afraid do not lose heart be bold at all times because god is with you and nothing can succeed against you 
Can we just close our eyes and pray and thank Him for this beautiful privilege that He's given us. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank You for this beautiful day. This beautiful privilege that You've given us. To be justified and glorified by you and that you are with us at all times and nothing can succeed against us we might be going through the valley of the shadow of death but I know for sure we know for sure we will never stay there the valley of the shadow of death will never succeed against us our lack will not succeed the crisis we face will not succeed. The opinions of people will not succeed. The declaration of your promises will elevate our lives, will set us free, will deliver us and beautify our lives. We acknowledge it. We say yes and amen to it. We are going to live a bold, confident life because you are for us and nothing can succeed against us. Let this word bear hundredfold fruit. Empower every heart and mind. Holy Spirit, take control so that this word will permeate in the hearts and minds and strengthen in Jesus' name, Amen, Amen, Amen. We're going to participate in the Lord's table. You know, Paul writes to the church, whenever we eat of his flesh and drink of his blood, we remember and declare the power of his death. Just like we heard today. Because of his death, you know, you and I, we stand justified and glorified, bearing in us the likeness of Jesus, the likeness of our Creator, the likeness of our Deliverer in us. What a privilege it is. This is what we are going to declare because of His death. God is for us and not against us. Can we just close our eyes? In the night that Jesus was betrayed, He broke the bread. He gave it to them saying, this is my body broken for you. He took the cup. He gave it to them saying, there's a cup of the New Testament shed for the forgiveness of our sins. As long as we eat of his flesh and drink of his blood, we declare the power of his death. We just testify to us that God is for us and not against us. With this in mind, can we all eat of his flesh together? And we all drink of his blood together. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful privilege that you've given us to call you Abba Father and to be your sons and daughters. You are our God and we are your children. What a privilege to be called us the children of the Most High God in this world. We know for sure this gives us a right to stand on this firm ground that you are for us and nothing can succeed against us. I pray this week will be a glorious week, a happy week, a blessed week, a strong week, a powerful week, a fruitful week. They will fear nothing. Let no evil come near them. Let tyranny be far from them. If anyone come against them, anything comes against them, they will lose their ground, lose their power, lose their hold because you are with us. Protect them throughout this week. Be a wall of fire around all of them. 
let your blood cover them let your angels minister to them bless they going out and they coming in let your peace which passeth all understanding guard their heart and their mind strengthen them with boldness in jesus name amen 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 god bless you you will do it